Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at an R package called Ray Shader, which can do some pretty amazing visualizations, particularly when it comes to both 2D and 3D mapping. So we are here on RayShader.com, and we're going to have a look at this page. It has some really great examples. I'm going to take some of their code from this page and run it in RStudio to show you how it runs. And then I'm going to share several other sites where people have been using this package to produce some really extraordinary visualizations. So let's jump into it. And so Ray Shader, we can see immediately here, we've got this really interesting mountains and river with a bit of cloud cover coming over the top. As we scroll down, they've got a couple of images here showing some of the examples. And so a couple of these I am going to run for you in our studio just to show you some of the code. Coming further down, we can see that they step through starting off with something fairly basic with a map here with textures. And then they work through adding different elements to it to eventually end up with what we saw above. Coming down further, we can see they even add elements like clouds up above. This is really some pretty amazing stuff. When we think about R and how we would normally think about visualization in R, it's probably much more traditional than this. But it really shows you some of the things that are possible. Coming down further, a couple of these I am going to run for you. So some actual real mapping examples. And as we come further down, once we've done those, we then get into some of the graphs. So producing graph, various different kinds of heat maps uh, and other graphs where we can add that third dimension. We can do topographical maps. Not sure how Tufty would feel about this one here. Scatter plot with some 3D heights to it probably doesn't quite conform to those traditional graphing principles, but is showing you things that can be done. Some of these hexagonal graphings, though, uh, I've seen these applied across real life maps as a way of uh, being able to show different kinds of demographics. So that's pretty cool. And that brings us to the bottom of the page. If we go digging into the uh, tutorials and blog posts, we can see a whole lot more. I will link this and all of these other sites up for you down below the video so you'll be able to go and explore this further. This is a package that I came across and was really wowed by. But it's not one that I use in my own analysis. So that's why I'm not really showing a whole ton of code. And the code that I am showing has just come off this introductory page. So it is very much the help code. But by seeing these other examples, hopefully you're inspired. It could be something where you can see some really great examples of what you might be able to do with this. Okay, so jumping over to our studio. And so we start off with a couple of library calls. Ray Shader is available off CRAN, so we can just go Packages, Install, install it there. Uh, we can get it from the author's site as well. So run our library functions there to get access to those. Then we've just got some code here downloading a file of uh, some data that is going to be used for some of this graphing. And so first one here, it's just reproducing that fairly basic map. We run that and so we can see there's our top down that we saw from the website. And we can see that didn't take much code. We've just used our normal tidyverse style of expression here. Coming down, we want the 3D version. You can see that it gets a little bit more complex. We're adding some elements to it, then going with a plot 3D. There's a bit of rendering that's going to happen as well. So we'll run this uh, and this actually takes a little while, probably seconds rather than minutes, but some time. So I will pause. So probably about 15 seconds wasn't too long for this particular one. We can see down here in the plotting window, we have this, but in a second I'll grab across it actually produced one more window where we're going to be able to rotate it. So we will drag that over, blowing it up to full screen. And we can see that actually we can now rotate through to be able to see all of the different views of this. This particular one we can see is just a uh, mountain range and river. It's I'm not sure if it's real or artificial. I suspect it's artificial data just for purposes of practicing. But we can see that's pretty cool. That's not something we would normally associate with being able to be produced in R. 
Okay, coming down to our next bit of code. So this next set of code again off that ratiator.com site, just the, the initial page. So now it's Monterey Bay, so I believe this is now some real data. And we can see a little bit more kind of labeling bits and pieces there. We'll run it again. I'll hit pause. So again, not not too slow. I think this was another, probably another 10 to 15 seconds producing this one. Depends how much else you're running on the system and how powerful your system is. I've got my screen recording, some other bits and pieces open. It's probably slowing it down a little. And you can see again, we have this really pretty impressive looking rotatable 3D image in addition to in our studio just producing that static image as well. Contour map takes slightly longer to render up. So it gives us the top down and then it changes over to the three dimensional view. You can zoom in on the static one. And if we wait a little bit longer, it'll also give us the one where we can rotate it as well. Then if we have a look, so the diamonds, we can see a bit of a plot here. So we can see that it has produced the top down heat maps and then takes a little bit more time, just thinking and doing a little bit more processing to create these in the 3D. So here we have the 3D ones. Being able to rotate this one, probably not quite as interesting. I guess for data exploration, we can have a bit of rotation here. And I think for some of these, like this example, there's more of a degree of novelty than genuine value. Uh, we do get to see one extra dimension of patterning. So we can, we can see these particular spikes or whatever, whatever it was that we were plotting out of the diamond data set. A little bit hazy quite on which variables it was. But I think the real value is where we are looking at the more demographic and topographical combinations instead. So let's jump out of our studio. If you want to recreate anything that I've shown you here, all of that code is sitting there on rayshader.com. Okay, so coming back here to a couple of these pages, I'll link all of these up. And each of these people is doing a really impressive job and really actually making use of this ray shading tool. So they start off with that Monterey Bay. They then move into an example on San Francisco. They're providing all of the code, so you can work along with them if you want to. And so you can see that they are grabbing San Francisco by elevation. They've got different map images that they can run over the top of it. You can see that they've added a map overlay, so now we can see some streets in there as well. And then further 3D, there I think they've just added a label, then the animation. That was the animation of from Ray Shader itself. Here's animation from Francisca. It's probably a little bit much, um, but in terms of being able to plot out something, lay streets over it, label it, and possibly color code, do things like that. So I think this they've done as a bit of a demonstration slash tutorial. The next two that we'll look at are probably a little bit more along those demographic lines. So this one, Hong Kong properties price distribution. So we've got uh, Carrie Lo and Yung Wong who have produced this. And we can see here they've got some animated ones there. But they give us tutorial. And if we come back up the top, they give us the, the data and the R script for being able to do that with the Hong Kong data. And being able to rotate yourself rather than watching that anima animation will certainly give you a lot more value. But I thought that was a pretty cool example. And then the very last one, looking at the Grand Canyon. And again, this one really impressive, going through step by step how to end up with something with the Grand Canyon, the plotting, the elevation, even how to add in images, text, that kind of thing. So that is really pretty cool. This one here, also they have a tutorial over on YouTube. So coming over to YouTube and you can see they actually only have 866 subs. So jump on there, hit subscribe and they share their code. They've got an hour 44 tutorial here for you to have a look at. That really just steps through step by step by step to really give you a, a really detailed impression. Whereas I'm just kind of giving you some examples, some pretty surface level stuff. So Spencer, give Spencer some love, hit subscribe, and you will be getting a really good solid detailed tutorial on Ray Shader.
So that's it for today. I thought this was a really, really impressive tool that I really wanted to share. Hopefully that was an interesting taster. If you want to learn more, certainly check out the links to these other pages where they go in much more depth. You'll be able to work along. Rayshader itself, there's tutorials and blogs here as well. I'll be back soon with more videos about R stats, research and random stuff.